Okay, there we go. So at this point in our program, we uh, shift uh, time periods dramatically. All of the pieces you've heard thus far are from different historical uh, time periods over music history. So the very first piece uh, was not exactly a uh, medieval era piece, but the opening sound of it, the unison vocal medley, was representative of that. Everything else you've heard since then is accurate to the time period. Um, and we had a long discussion Apparently I'm out of breath. <laughs> we had a long discussion uh, over the course of our musical study this semester. What was the purpose of music and the role of music in all of these time periods? And up until right now, as we enter the Romantic era, um, everything, uh, music really served one sole purpose, and it was for uh, the church, for sacred purposes. So all of the texts you've heard thus far have been sacred in nature, but all of the music and the composers that were featured were hallmarks and staples of those particular time periods. Um, when we enter the Romantic era, as we are about to sing a beautiful piece by Johannes Brahms, uh, music starts to take shape into something of what most of us now use it for, for personal enjoyment and reflection and telling a story of humanity. So I certainly hope you enjoy this next piece. Um, if you happen to close your eyes and sit back and drift off, don't fall asleep, but drift off into a very happy place, uh, we don't blame you because it is just absolutely gorgeous. <laughs>
So we have a bit of a transition now. Um, over the course of the program this evening, you've seen our combined ensembles, you've seen our madrigal singers, you'll see our madrigal singers once again. We'll hear from our combined tenors and basses, our combined sopranos and altos, our barbershop quartet, a little bit more from the madrigals later on, and then of course from our combined choirs as well. Uh, welcome now to the Impressionism era, era. It's about to get a little weird, but it's all good. Um, it's a beautiful French love song uh, with some really intricate harmonies. Everything we've heard thus far, with the exception of the Brahms that we just heard, um, had some pretty stereotypical traditional harmonic part writing, um, which was true to the era. Brahms takes it and says, well, we can do a little bit more with it. It is the Romantic era, of course. And then, of course, uh, Claude Debussy in the Impressionism era says, well, we're just going to throw out the rule book for the most part. Um, and so we get some really beautiful harmonies in this next piece. Let the club for 
transition here. We, we were in France, now we're in England. Welcome. Um, <laughs> the previous song that you just heard, The Vagabond, by a very well-known uh, British composer, Ray Fawn Williams, uh, comes from a song cycle. He wrote it for solo voice at first, and then obviously, like many things, it's arranged for a full choir. Uh, this next piece is also written by a British composer, a little less, uh, less uh, lesser well-known, Dame Ethel Smith, who is one of the very few female composers we get out of the early 20th century. Uh, which we are now in. And uh, at this time, music once again starts, the purpose of music starts to take a little bit of a turn. So with Brahms, we start to get a little bit more of the human experience through storytelling. Uh, with the piece that we just heard from the tenors and the basses, we start adapting uh, poetry. And now for the sopranos and altos, uh, behind me here, we start using it as an anthem for a variety of social movements. And so uh, the March of the Women here was composed as part of the suffragist movement uh, from uh, roughly 100 years ago uh, by Dame Ethel Smith and uh, is still sung from time to time today. Uh, so please enjoy the March of the Women. Yeah. 
We have our barber shop crew. that brings us together it's the music that brings joy untold those sweet melodies those grand harmonies like the fire that burns in my soul that brings us together, but it's the friendships that make us stay, sharing music with friends, fills our hearts with song. So sublime, but only if we 
Just like that, it's present day and we have one song left. Wow, look at that, time flies. Uh, again, if you didn't grab the QR code on your way in for the program, I do encourage you to scan it on your way out so you can see the program. Um, you'll read a little bit more about each historical time period that we've traveled through, uh, the different compositional techniques, music historical facts, if you will, uh, and there are program notes specific to many of the pieces that you heard on tonight's program. Um, the pieces you heard on the program tonight were, by far and means, not an exhaustive list of uh, music throughout history or time, but they surely do represent some of the hallmarks, whether it be from uh, composers uh, themselves or just really well-known choral works. Uh, we've had a really wonderful time putting this program together. Uh, I always ask the kids in January, December, January, you know, what do you want our, our theme to be for the spring? And um, the idea of time, journeying through time came up, and I said, okay, I mean, I'll program some stuff for you, but we're gonna do some kind of older choral music. It's not gonna be all modern stuff. They said, oh yeah, okay, okay, and I said, okay. Um, so we, uh, I, I'm a little surprised at myself. We were having a conversation before the program this evening. Um, I, as a musician, I feel like I, I myself have been doing this for quite a while now, and this was a challenging concert program for me. And I turned to the kids and I said, this was a vocal workout, a mental workout, a musical workout for all of you to go from Palestrina to Bach to Mozart to Brahms to this, to this, to this, to, to what we'll end with this evening is not only a representation of music throughout time and the greater story that music tells and its purpose in our lives, but it is a workout and a challenge for all of us. There were some really difficult things on this program that uh, I don't know if many ensembles would have tackled, let alone throwing it all onto one big plate and serving it up for the whole semester. Um, so to say that I'm humbled by all of these folks behind me and immensely proud and grateful is a, is a vast understatement. Uh, I, I often say with my colleague, Mr. Dresco, we have some of the best jobs in this building. I mean, we get to work with just some of the best kids. Uh, who are so passionate about what they do and bring such joy and smiles to our community and to our little neck of the woods here. And I know it's cliche, but indulge me. But if you really want to see purpose, passion, and pride on display, come to our music and art events because uh, you'll see it like nothing else across our, our community. So uh, students, thank you all so, so much for all of your talent and your time this past semester. Uh, I couldn't be more grateful and I couldn't be more proud. I certainly want to thank all of my all of my colleagues. I know we have a handful of our administrators here uh, this evening who are incredibly supportive of, our, of the arts around town. Uh, my my good friend and colleague, Mr. Dresco, our band director here, uh, who was very helpful in programming this evening's concert. When I said, "Chris, I don't know what to do," and he said, "Well, here's this and this and this. What about this?" Uh, so so thank you very much, Chris. I certainly want to thank all of our music teachers from across the district. We don't get here without uh, recognizing where we've been in the years before. So thank you to all those folks, and uh, certainly. Thank you to all of our technical people in the back. I want to thank our accompanist, Mr. Matt Zurich, for joining us for this evening. Thank you. 
And again, I want to thank all of you so much for coming out and joining us as well. I do very, very much appreciate it. Uh, all of your time and dedication to our, our program, excuse me, doesn't go unnoticed. There's a last group of kids I want to recognize, uh, which is, of course, our seniors. So if you'll please uh, hold your applause until the very end of our medium list here. Caroline Benoit, Robin Chrysler, Calvin DeLude, Glenn Fern, Cameron Melcarney, Ryan Markey, and Jacob Miller. Several of these students have come in and out of our program over the course of the past year, and I actually remembered several of them I recruited out on the side field freshman year when we were playing kickball because music was a computer game at that point. Um, so I'm thrilled that they've uh, stuck with it. Uh, this particular class of students, they bring an immense amount of joy. We have so much fun. We often say that uh, our, our upper class ensemble, period three, is a good, healthy mix of music making and learning and just telling jokes and enjoying one's company. And that, at the end of the day, is what music is all about. I hope uh, that regardless of where you go in life, you know that you all always have a place back here uh, at your home at Berlin High School and that you keep music uh, and theater and the arts and everything in your lives for many, many, many years to come. So thank you for sharing these special four years with me. Our last piece this evening is a contemporary choral piece, Your Soul is Song, and I think it really just puts a bow on this evening's program. Uh, regardless of what the purpose of music has been, whether it be for religious purposes, telling personal narratives or poetry, standing up for social justice movements, uh, it serves as something that is certainly greater and larger than all of us as individuals and is something best served when uh, we come together and do it together and then give it away to an audience like you. Uh, so I certainly do hope that you enjoy this final piece, Your Soul is Song.
Oh, yeah.